Trump telling Khabib at UFC he's going to stop the Palestine war. UFC undefeated champion Khabib urged Trump to stop the Gaza genocide. I know you're going to stop all this Palestine war. Trump tells everyone what they want to hear. Apparently, he said, we're going to stop it. I'm going to stop it. Yo, bro. Bro. Oh, no. It's it, Biden is so cooked. It's so Jover. People are so desperately looking for anything to grab onto to be like, yeah, that's why I'm voting for Trump. Because Brandon sucks. And people are so fucking stupid that they will eat this shit for days. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I really, really, really. Oh, God. It is going to be unimaginably broken, unimaginably busted. I cannot fucking. Oh, no. Oh, it was a major Trump suck fest at UFC last night. Yeah, of course. The UFC is, is always a Trump suck fest. People are so dumb. I think you're overthinking it. No, dude, there is a very large contingency of people who are understandably very frustrated with Joe Biden for the way that uh, he has conducted himself, uh, allowing Israel to do like unimaginable permanent ethnic cleansing, okay? Unlimited genocide on the Gazan population. And those people are looking for an alternative. But the alternative is not Donald Trump. Okay, the alternative is not motherfucking Donald Trump. Let me tell you why. Because Donald Trump is also invested in permanent genocide of the Palestinian population. Like unlimited genocide for the, uh, for the Palestinians. So the idea that people think that like he's going to be a better alternative to Joe Biden is fucking so stupid, especially when it comes to Gaza. Okay, there is no alternative. We are the alternative. Okay, we, we are the alternative. Both of these parties are going to do unlimited genocide on Gaza. Okay? Be for real right now. What? Donald Trump is the reason why October 7 happened. I'll stand on that. In any case, um, holy shit. Uh, 50 times. Thank you, man. You know, I, I don't know. I got a little girl alone. And I gotta see. I, I think this could be it. Well, if it is 50 times. Thank you, man. You know, I, I don't Wait, so you're telling me the liberals are wrong about Trump? Wait, what do you mean? I don't know what you're saying here. What is this? China doing some cross-border racism? Okay, bro. Listen. First of all, I can't even hear it. Secondly, if we're talking about racist ads, isn't this an Indian channel? It's just so... It's so funny for, for an Indian uh, news network to be like, look at how racist these Chinese ads are. It's like, bro... And then, and then here are our commercial sponsors. <laughs> and then immediately it's like, <laughs> and here, and now a word from our sponsors. And it's literally like a black guy with like skin whitening. <laughs> it's an ad. It's an ad. To, what, it's an ad for the perfect cream to whiten your skin. <laughs> anyway, what is this? Here's the full thing. India and China being racist. I just like, I don't want to get into this shit right now. What is this? Tommy, random question. Speaking of sex, do any of your current former members of Congress have possession of any interesting videos you fooling around with other men other than your fiance while you were engaged? Totally hypothetical. Not because I've had direct conversations with them about it, of course. Wait, what? Wait, what? What does baseball have to do with the sexual preference of the minority? Why are we celebrating who someone chooses to have sex with? Isn't it just a little weird? <laughs> Consistency enjoyers and, and debate pervers be like, well, technically, she's not celebrating um, her, her adultery, okay? So technically, she's still consistent. It's not hypocritical. TikTok, Trump is so popular there. Oh, yeah. In less than 12 hours, Trump's TikTok gained 1.4 million followers, about four times as uh, four X as many as Biden's campaign account for what it's worth. Of course, dude, because he posted it, because he posted his TikTok literally in the midst of of a, a massively uh, televised event. So of course his TikTok's going to bang. Also it's Trump. Who doesn't want to fucking see more Trump? Like he's a content God. I don't want to see fucking Joe Brandon's content. Cause I know it's like manufactured. It's manicured. It's not real. It sucks. Trump on the other hand, it, many of you forget, many of you forget Donald Trump was a vine God brother. Donald Trump literally before Twitter was a vine God. He would just sit there and do vines before he even ran for the presidential office. He used to make banger ass vines. Like he would just sit there and fucking be like, that's right. The, the, the famous, like the greatest 
the greatest Mexican bowls at Trump Tower. That's a vine. There's a vine of him uh, fucking escaping the the uh, treacherous attack of a bald eagle. Hopefully Anthony Weiner stays off vine. He's really sick. Dude, this is what he used to do, bro. Oh my God. The people He's gonna Okay, it's over. He's going to win. He's going to win the election now. It's just, it's done. I'm telling you, this is, this is devastating. If I'm Joe Brandon, I'm now definitely trying to fucking immediately ban TikTok, which ironically will hurt him even further. He is going to make so many fucking, if he still has it, if he still got that old ass Riz that he had from back from like 2013, Data says there's two to one pro Trump to pro Biden content. As TikTok struggles with the Biden app and it's becoming a hot bit of Trump activity, according to TikTok officials, there's two to one pro Trump to pro Biden content on the app preferred by Gen Z, my latest. Yeah, the thing is, I don't believe this, okay? I don't believe this at all. Here's why. I don't think there's a lot of pro Trump sentiment expressed on TikTok. There are, there is for sure. I think Twitter is infinitely worse though. But what I will say is there's a lot of anti-Biden content. There's a lot of pro-Trump content. There's very little pro-Biden content. And there's a lot of anti-Biden content. And I think that is the major problem. And that is precisely the reason why when you look at like Gen Z numbers right now, like Biden is not doing too well in comparison to previous elections where he would have like at least a 16 to 20 point lead. I don't know how journalists go to school to produce shit like this. It's, it's sad because, like, this kind of data analysis, unironically, is very good. Like, it's, it's um, very important, I would say. It's a really interesting way to, like, try to, uh, try to get a snapshot. But it's so, it is so unimaginably biased that there is never any, like, good content that comes out of it, unfortunately. Like, this kind of, these kinds of articles are almost always just, like, so muddy so incredibly fucking biased that you can never derive any sort of like serious analysis off of this for the reasons that I just mentioned. Like it, it's just not good. This is not good analysis at all. <laughs> they are confusing apathy to hate, which the media is not understanding will result in less voter turnout, not more people voting for Trump. Yeah. <sighs> the analysis is so bad, but you're right. The data is good to see. Exactly. But the problem is when you're biased in the way that you look at the data or when you're fucking out of touch, when you look at the data, you unfortunately are going to be looking at the data with the wrong lenses and therefore your analysis is going to be faulty off of it and the data is not going to be valid. What do I mean by this? Of course, there's a shit ton, like I said, of anti-Biden content on the platform. A, an unimaginable amount of anti-Biden content. There's very little pro-Biden content. However, there's pro-Trump content. Now, the pro-Trump content isn't like super wide. The pro-Trump content isn't like super popular. Okay. It's, but you know what the most popular form of content is in that sphere? Anti-Biden content. Because Biden's the president. The pro-Biden content is like doing pro-Israel rallies. Why go out and rally? That There's that element to it as well, I would say. For sure. Like 40% of pro-Trump content is Deborah off the perk. Yeah. How are we ever supposed to know? 1,000% of our content is catered. There's also that as well. But these people see anti-Biden as pro-Trump content. Uh, yes. You should not be allowed to criticize. You do not even run. What? Yeah, only people, only people who are uh, allowed to criticize politicians are those who are running for office. Fair. People of India are going crazy that President Obama was constantly chewing gum. And then on top of that, he took it out of his mouth, put it back. You can't do it. It's disgusting. He sucks. God, these, oh my God, he's just so good. Anthony Weiner, you're sick. You're fired. Weiner, it's time for you to get out. You're a total joke. We don't want perverts elected in New York City. No perverts. A Rod's making a deal because he's guilty as hell. Mac, I'd rather have the money than your crummy gift to me. Miley, don't let them get you down. They're all jealous. Don't give Egypt one and a half billion dollars. Rebuild the United States first. 
The billion dollar Obamacare website is fired. I think if you don't recognize this kind of stuff from Donald Trump, you will never be able to fully grasp why he is so popular. Like almost everything he said here, almost oh. everything he said here is like unimaginable for a politician, okay? This is why I say he's white man's Obama. Even though Obama was never like, Obama was never this quote unquote real, but he was incredibly charismatic and was able to craft a persona for the annoying liberals, uh, the NPR listeners, the NPR enjoyers of the world. He was able to be incredibly charismatic for them, okay? Donald Trump, on the other hand, when he was first running, wasn't voted for because he was like incredibly fucking reactionary. Many people forget that. He was voted on, he was voted for because he was seen as an outsider at a time when there was a, an unimaginable amount of animosity towards those in positions of power. So he was able to portray himself as an outsider and also moderate, okay? Hey, I listen to NPR up first and marketplace. Yeah, me too. I'm just saying that like, ultimately, ultimately, uh, a lot of people forget that. Now, why is that important for today's analysis? Because he doesn't have that shit as hard anymore because he can't be the outsider. He was a president for four years. He also, we know what his policies are, okay? We also know what his motherfucking policies are. So that, you know, sucks for him as well. We don't have to imagine that. We know what the fuck that looks like. Costa. Anyway, the only reason he was elected is because he looks cutter than his day and cutter than his that always wins. Yes, yeah, true. Obama was a great president, maybe even the best. Okay, shut the fuck up. You must be trolling. I would go so far as to say, unironically, pre-October 7, Joe Brandon, Afghanistan pullout, NLRB moves, all this shit, would have been a better Democratic Party president than Barack Obama. Post-October 7, he's genocide Joe. Okay, plenty of issues still, plenty of issues that I have with the Democratic Party. But overall, I, I said it, I said it for months that Biden, um, pre October 7, Biden was pre October 7 and pre like anti immigration bill, which came after October 7, if you recall. Okay, genocide Joe was unironically more progressive than Barack Obama. It's true. However, post October 7, that dynamic changed dramatically. Donald Trump tried to ban TikTok on national security grounds during his presidency. But now he has joined TikTok. In 2020, he signed a presidential executive order attempting to ban the platform for its link to China, which was ultimately blocked by US courts. He has since criticized recent attempts to curtail it, saying this would empower Facebook owner Meta. Trump has now gained more than 6 million followers since launching his account on Saturday. Trump said he would use every tool available to speak directly with the American people. This move has been seen by many as an attempt to reach younger voters. A February Axios poll found that 58% of voters aged 18 to 34 are unsure if they will vote in November. A March Harvard Youth Survey found that just 53% of 18 to 29 year olds definitely plan to vote this fall, compared with that age group's 2020 voter turnout rate of 68%. Younger voters used to support Biden much more than Trump, but some polls suggest that this support is diminishing. In April, an NPR poll showed that Trump was two points ahead of Biden among millennial and Gen Z voters while Biden led overall among voters 45 years and older, including those in the silent and greatest generations. Biden is at just 50% among voters under 30 in the Wall Street Journal's National and Swing State polling. While that's still about 10 points ahead of Trump, it's a significant decline compared to the 2020 elections, and roughly equal to his vote share among seniors. 48%. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And thanks for watching.